Somebody look at your neighbor and say, she finna bring it tonight. I said, somebody look at your neighbor and say, she finna bring it tonight. And if you ain't got a neighbor, look at yourself and say, she finna bring it to fuck a night. Oh, we gonna jump right into it, because that's how we do it over here. The Isley Brothers was born in Cincinnati, Ohio. And in Cincinnati, Ohio, that's where they started singing. The Isley Brothers' father was a professional vocalist. And he was known for singing gospel music. Their father began to train his children, the Isley Brothers, at a very early, at a very young age. And he trained the Isley brothers to sing gospel music like he used to sing back in his day. The Isley brothers' mother was known as being a church pianoist, meaning she used to play at different churches and she used to play at her own church and she could play the fucker out of that piano. And sometimes at the Isley brothers' early performances, singing gospel music, their mother would play the piano for them. The group started out as a gospel quartet group in 1955. And in that group was Ronald Rudolph O'Kelly and Vernon Isley, known as the Isley Brothers. When their brother Vernon passed away in a road accident, the Isley Brothers said, you know, I want to do this motherfucker good gospel no more. You know, I want to do the R&B. I want to do the doo-wop. Wop doobity do. Okay, that's what I want to do. I feel it in my soul. That's what they said. I want to switch it up. No more gospel. But it's time for the R&B doo-wop. They said we begin singing for Jesus in the early days. And now it's time to switch it up a little bit. Is that all right? So between 1957 and 1959, the Isley Brothers will record for different labels, such as Teenage Records and Mark X Records. But in 1957, they signed with RCA Records. That's right. I said they signed with RCA Records. Then they came out with their first significant hit called Shout. Y'all remember that one right there, Shout. Everybody know that song. I said, put your hands up and shout. Come on now, shout. Y'all remember that song right there. The Isley Brothers later moved on to other record labels, such as Skepta and Motown Records. Then other hit songs begin to be produced. Songs like Twist and Shout. Y'all remember that? This old heart of mine and other great songs that they made. In 1969, I said I ain't gonna tell you too long. In 1969, the brothers left Motown Records and they started their own record label. And the record label that they started was called T-Neck Records. Uh-huh, T-Neck Records. When the Isley brothers started their own record label, T-Neck Records, they were able to do things that they weren't really able to do as much. Things like writing their own music, okay, and the sound of their own music, okay? So they begin to take a, a little bit control. You know how it make a person feel to be able to take control of something that they made. Ah, listen to me tonight. Some folks said, I, I wonder so, so, madame. I'm moving on. Some folks said, can you tell us the story about Jimi Hendrix, okay? Because some folks said, I wondered, so, so, madam, how Jimi Hendrix and the Isley Brothers, how they hooked up. They said, do you know about that story? I said, I sure do. They said, well, so, so, can you tell us about the story on how Jimi Hendrix hooked up with the Isley Brothers? Okay, well, I'm going to tell it to fuck a night. Is that all right? I said, I'm going to tell you a quick version of the story on tonight. One day, 
Kelly Isley and Ronald Isley, they was looking for a guitar player. Uh-huh. I said they were looking for a guitar, a guitarist to play in the motherfucker band. Somebody said, what happened? What happened to the, to the other guitarist that they had? I'm pretty sure they could have got a good guitarist. Well, the guitar that they had, who was playing for them at first, he quit on their asses. Uh-huh. I said he quit on the ass. I'm not motherfucker playing for your ass no more. Go find somebody else. That's what the guitarist told these motherfuckers. And they heard about this man in a village. They said it's a man in a village that the Isley brothers heard about. And this man that was in the village, his name was, uh uh-huh, that's right, Jimi Hendrix. They end up finding little Jimi Hendrix, okay? And the Isley brothers, they asked Jimi Hendrix, they said, could you, could you play for us? We heard that you can play, you know, the guitar and stuff. So can you come let us hear what you can do? Because we just heard about you. We ain't never heard you. So can you come play for us? Jimi Hendrix said, my guitar is in the shop. Listen to me. Jimi Hendrix said, my, my guitar in the shop. And it ain't, it ain't got no strings on it. <laughs> so the Isley brothers they got his guitar out the shop for him and got him some strings and said, okay, show us what you got. Okay, Jimmy, we want to hear, we done got you these strings and got your guitar out. We need to see what you can do. Hey, am I talking tonight? So they said, Jimmy Hendrix, he said, I like that song that y'all did called Twist and Shout. Okay, he said, Jimmy said, I like that song right there. The Isley Brothers said, Jimmy Hendrix start playing that motherfucker ca- song twist and sound the guitar part to it shit and it took you know what i'm saying took them to a whole nother motherfucking world they were sitting there like the little merle married a whole new world and shit okay said when he started playing it took the motherfucking isley brothers into a frenzy they said who the fuck is this tall nigga he can play the fucker out of this guitar you hear what i'm saying to y'all honey the isley brothers said fucker that you hired Hired him right on the spot. And this story, it goes from there. Hired him right on the spot. She bows, honey. Jimi Hendrix. Yay. Play his motherfucking ass off. And that's the story, y'all. Because you wanted to know that. Some people wanted to know this. Okay, and that's the story on how Jimi Hendrix hooked up with the Isley Brothers. And then he started his own motherfucking shit. Y'all already know, and I'm going to do that video at another time. Back into the Isley Brothers. Now... In 1985, the Isley Brothers released an album called Masterpiece. How many of y'all remember that album that the Isley Brothers released in 1985? Uh Uh-huh, called what? Masterpiece. The Masterpiece album was known as being the 23rd album released by the Isley Brothers for the first time since 1973. I want you to think about what I just said. Okay, the 23rd album released by the Isley Brothers for the first time since 1973. Y'all know what I talk about and how I bring it. So I want you to just use your mind right there for a little bit. A year later, in 1986, okay, after releasing all these things, the Isley Brothers lost their brother, O'Kelly Isley. The report said that he had cancer. That's what they said. And he died of a sudden heart attack inside of his home located in Alpine, New Jersey. Okay, that's what the the report said, how he died. The Isley brothers added some of their brothers in the group. Okay, they said, don't forget about us. We want to get on too. So later on, I said they end up adding some of the other family members, the brothers and stuff on into the group. And they continued to make music all the way into the 1990s. Okay, y'all remember some of the music that they done made. So I'm not saying that they fell off or anything. But they said, shoot, after they lost their brother, they continued. You know, the show couldn't just stop there. (laughs) Come on, put it together. He said, we have to keep going and add some other family members. Y'all ready to go deeper down this rabbit hole tonight? Well, come on and let's do it. The music business. Okay, I had to switch it up for y'all. Y'all know how I got to tell a little bit. And then I got to tell you what I see up in this situation. Right here, the music business was shady then. 
okay, when they started out doing music and it's still shady now. We know this, some corrupt things are going on in the music business. Just like most entertainers back in the day, you know, they had to make sacrifice. And the Asley brothers had to make theirs as well. Once you start playing the game with these powder face fuckers, the powers that be, okay, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and making money with them, a sacrifice got to come next. That's right, I said a, a sacrifice of something has to come next. Whether it be your self-respect, whether it be somebody you love, you get the point. We got to overstand this. This shit is real. Now, I want you to see, you know, who had to go in order for the Asley brothers to keep going higher. Uh huh. Just keep going a little bit, what? Higher. Just take me a little bit. I want to go, what? Higher. Murder by numbers. Y'all ready to do it? Y'all know how I do it. Go pull out your pens if you need to. Go pull out your pens and mark it down if you need to. Y'all know how I do this. Murder by numbers. And if you have not seen the video that I made, Murder by Numbers, go on my YouTube page and go look it up, Murder by Numbers, so you can overstand this part of the little, this video, a little bit better, by and by. Okay? The Isley Brothers. Okay, somebody had to go. And out of the Isley Brothers, who was that? I'm going to get into it and I'm going to get out of it real quick. Okay? Real click on you. Oh, Kelly. Isley. Let's look up these numbers, y'all. O'Kelly Isley died on March 31st in 1986. Let's add these numbers up. 3 plus 3 plus 1 plus 1 plus 9 plus 8 plus 6 equals what? 31. 3 times 1 equals what? 3. They go to the 3 right there. Okay, I just broke down the death of O'Kelly Isley. Excuse me. O'Kelly Isley. One of the ones who was in the Isley Brothers group. One of their brothers. Mm -hmm. I'm showing you how it go. Now, he died at age what? O'Kelly Isley died at age 48. Let's put these numbers together. Four times eight equals what? 32. Three times two equals what? Six. Put it together. And we get what? Allegedly, we get the three-six murder. Okay. We already know what the fucker is up with. Okay, even though they try to fool us and, and play things around. No, no, no. We already know what's going on. I'm talking to the ones who's been following me and overstand how I do this. And don't forget, I'm about to end it right here. The Isley brothers. He had a, uh, they had another brother. Okay, they used to sing with him. They used to sing with them, I should say. Marvin Isley. When did he die? I want y'all to break that down for me. I want y'all to show me that. Marvin Isley. He died on June 6, 2010. June 6, 2010. 6 plus 6 plus 2 plus 1 equals what? 15. 1 plus 5 equals what? That's right, 6. They go, they go R6 right there. Somebody said, where the 3 at so so? He died at age 56. 5 times 6 equal what? That's right. That's clear to be 30. 3 plus 0 equal what? 3. They go to 3 right there. Put it together. The 3, 6 murder. We're going to say what? That's right, allegedly, because that's what we got to say. But it's been going on for years. And please don't think it's just a coincidence. Now I want you to go check this out. And you can go look it up yourself. A month before Marvin Isley died, they released Ronald Isley from, from prison. Slash the, the halfway house. You got to know how to read that story for real. From, from the halfway house. Yeah, they released him after he agreed to that motherfucker's sacrifice. Oh, let me stop it right there. Okay, put it together, y'all. Put it together. So we see that this has been going on for years and years. We just now seeing it. The proof is coming to the motherfucking light. The proof is in the fucker kaput. Go read the story for yourself and go look it up. We need a motherfucking Isley brother story now, huh? Hey, check it out. Y'all be good. And I will be back with the ones, the videos that y'all been asking me to do. Okay, yours might be up next. Be good.